This is a 3D printing and assembly guide of the Thunderstrike Impact Activated Grenade. The first thing we'll cover is the print settings and then the assembly, so let's head to the slicer. So we're here in the slicer and I'm using Bamboo Studio, but most of these settings should apply for Cura as well. So starting here, we're using a 0.16mm layer height, although you could use 0.2 or 0.24mm. The rest of these settings don't really matter that much, so just do what's best for your printer. Moving on to strength, we're using 3 walls, 10 top layers, 5 bottom layers, 45% infill, but if you want to save on weight and filament, I would suggest cutting the part at this point, and make sure you select cut to parts. Now if you go over to objects, you should have two parts, and then from here you can set the bottom part to 20%, and the top part 50 If you're using Cura Slicer, you would just add a support blocker, scale it to size, and make sure that it's at the same point. Once you have it covering the correct part, go to per model settings and select modify settings for overlaps. From here, click select settings, scroll down to infill. Then you should be able to change the infill just for this block. As you can see, we've achieved the same effect as in Bamboo Studio. And the last thing for this fuse body part is the supports. And I just use normal and a five degree threshold angle and that basically just means that it only supports the 90 degree overhangs. So make sure that in whatever slicer you're using, it's only supporting the 90 degree overhangs. And the rest of the support settings will vary by printer, but here's what we use. Moving on to the smaller pieces, all of them should be printed in this orientation. And it's basically the same settings for all three of these, 0.16 layer height and three walls. You can also keep the top and bottom layers the same. But for the infill, both the bolt guide and the rotating catch should be at least 85%. As for the top piece, you can keep it anywhere from 30 to 50%. The only support you'll need for these parts is on the top piece and the rotating catch. The safety spoon should be printed on either one of the sides. And once again, everything here is the same. 0.16mm layer height, 3 walls, and the top and bottom layers don't really matter that much. The infill can be 15 or even 20% and there should definitely be support on the 90 degree overhangs, and I found that tree supports work the best. And lastly, for the outer shell, everything else is the same, and for the infill, we're using 15%, although if you're using PLA, 20-25% to would be better. As for the supports, normal seems to work well, with the style being snug, although you could use tree supports if you wanted to. And we use the fuzzy skin setting, which gives it a nice texture and grip, but if the fuzzy skin is on the inside, it might give the bang snaps a slightly tighter fit. So now that we know how to print it, let's get to the actual assembly. So first, we'll clean up all of the printed parts, like sanding and removing supports, just like you would for any other print. For sanding, these two parts, which are the bolt guide and the safety spoon, are really the only parts that need to be sanded. So now that we got all of our parts prepped and ready, we can start assembling. In terms of the hardware or the non-printed parts, here's a list of what you'll need. Or if you want to save on some time and money, we do have hardware kits available. So the first step would be threading the main bolt through the rotating catch. And as you're threading the bolt through, make sure that it stays as centered as possible. Make sure that it's screwed on nice and tight. After that, you can go ahead and put on the main spring and make sure that the cut side is facing down towards the rotating catch. Then put the piece that we just assembled into the main fuse body, just like this. And go ahead and cock it. Make sure to do this step safely and keep it pointed in a safe direction or have your hand covering it. After that, we need to screw on the bolt guide, so put it in the top where the main bolt is exposed and screw it on. Use the pin or a small screwdriver as leverage to help screw it in. And this step is very important. Once you feel that little bit of resistance, slow down and make sure that it's properly aligned. To know if it's properly aligned, make sure that the pinhole 
is parallel to this cutout. After you've screwed that on and made sure that it's properly aligned, you can go ahead and put on the top piece. Just slot it over the top and then screw in the two smaller bolts. And then finally, you can put in the small spring into the slot. And it's probably best to secure it on the bottom with glue or any other adhesive to make sure that it doesn't get lost on the field. And that's it for the assembly.